My name is Lena Nielsen. I'm from uh, the IT University of Copenhagen. Uh, I'm an associate professor and I'm also head of the uh, Center for Personas Research and Application. I have worked with Personas in, for many, many, many years and I'm going to introduce to you a little bit about what it is what, uh, to work with Personas, why we work with Personas and also provide you with uh, some recommendations. Personas means mask. The Greek word for, uh, for mask is persona. And perso this is what we do when we look and design for other people. We put their mask on and try to understand their world by looking through their eyes of how they perceive the world. And we use that for design. Many don't know that uh, personas is actually an IT systems design method. And uh, today it's used in many different fields, uh, communication, marketing, and also of course for IT and product development. So why do we work with personas? We do it because we always construct a user. A lot of research shows that we always have this uh, imaginary user that we talk about. And we can do that without ever having met a real user. The problem with that is that we often talk uh, about the users as stereotypes. So if you look at these two photos, you're not, you know what kind of music this guy he will listen to and you are able to say what kind of music this uh, two girls, uh, three girls are, uh, will uh, listen to and you know that it wouldn't be the same. You are able to talk about these persons without ever having met them in real life but you can create stories about them. The problem is that we can create these stories without ever having met any real users and the stories often develop as a stereotype. And we know from IT systems development that people talk about the stupid user or they talk about other kinds of users. But we need to align our understanding of the users and also uh, understand the users from uh, from uh, research instead of just making it up in our minds. And we use personas because we always design for people who are different from our ourselves. People are not necessarily interested in the same as you are as a designer. And you can imagine how he would, this guy would create something for this old woman. What kind of system he would make. Probably something he would prefer to use himself and not something she would prefer to use. Uh, and we use personas for the design team to imagine a future uh, system. How a new system or a new internet site or a new product or a new communication campaign or a new marketing plan, how it will be uh, perceived by the user, how it be, will be used by the user and also in what context it will be used. So we use it for design purposes. But the persona in itself is nothing. I have actually come to uh, find that uh, persona is not a very good word because it makes people forget the, the use of personas, that you use them for something, that you use them for design. It's in what I call in other term scenarios that we start to think about and ideate about the use situation. And it's in scenarios that we describe ideas for use. So you can see this woman, it's not a very uh, good picture, but you can see she is uh, using, a, that's her cell phone, and she is using why she put, uh, puts on lipstick and dries a car. And I'm sure that the uh, manufacturer never thought about this, uh, this uh, way of using a cell phone. But we can, we can investigate use in the scenarios. And it's cheap and easy to create scenarios. It's little stories where we talk about how will a person, our persona, use this product that we are going to, uh, to create. So it's really important to remember that personas are just descriptions of users. They are grounded in uh, research, but it's in the use when we talk about design issues, is when we talk about product design, that the real purpose of the methods uh, come to light. And we did a rather uh, large 
research on uh, Danish companies who have been using um, personas for a number of years uh, and who were successful in using the method. What was it actually that they found made the uh, use successful? And we came up with these nine recommendations. First, when you start with the method, when you begin to use personas, consider which task the persona should use. Just don't make them because you think it's a fancy tool. What task is it actually that they are going to solve? Then remember there's a difference between personas and scenario. Don't put your scenarios into, uh, into the uh, persona description. The persona description is a description about a person. The scenarios are description about this person using your product. Then the persona's description should enable empathy. And this is the whole core of the method is that by understanding other people, by reading about them, we are able to create empathy towards them and then create uh, products that they would like to use. Uh, then it should be a, you should be able to distinguish uh, the description, the personas' descriptions from each other. Uh, some companies have a rather large number of uh, personas' descriptions, but I recommend never to have more than six. But you should be able to know why are these six personas uh, different. And uh, it should be the persona method as such should be part of the company's overall toolbox. Sometimes it's useful to use personas, sometimes it's useful to use something else. But people need to understand what it implies when you use personas. So the company needs to learn to use it, and it should be part of the overall toolbox. Uh, then we could see that there are a lot of companies that, uh, that say, OK, these the persona's descriptions are in my mind. But that implied that they never share their knowledge about the personas. So do something that makes the company and the employees and the uh, uh, teams remember the personas not only keep them in the minds. So enable knowledge sharing. Sustain the method. It's not something that just people know, OK, we did these personas, they are on the wall. And then many ask, what now? So you need to understand it's not just a description, it's a method. It's something that you have to constantly uh, put into your daily work, in your product development, and use constantly in the product development. We could also see that the companies who were really satisfied with the uh, method, they had a very thorough um, research uh, that were made the ground for the persona's description. And also, thorough data creates cred uh, credibility among management. And we finally, we could also see that support from management also made uh, the persona's method work much better. So when the uh, when top level management had said, OK, we believe in this method. Actually, the employees and the, uh, and the uh, project teams, they were much more satisfied with using the method than in the companies where that didn't have uh, uh, management support. So if Forrester Research found in August 2010, that a redesign with personas can provide a return of up to four times more. That's nice to know. I don't know how they measured it, but it's, it's, uh, it says something that actually, by understanding the users, that having, by having an aligned understanding of the different user groups, you can actually make money and, uh, and do a, give a, uh, do create a much better product. This was all that I had for you today. Of course, you can read much more on my blog called personas.dk, uh, um, or my book. Uh, but uh, remember that personas is nothing in itself. It's in use when you start to use and understand your personas that they become a valuable tool.